afternoon. Uh, we're going to begin right at 2 o'clock, like we said. Uh, this press conference is being called by the Boone County Prosecutor Todd Meyer. He's here to formally announce uh, charges uh, in the murder of Deputy Jacob Pickett. Speaking first will be Prosecutor Todd Meyer from the Boone County Prosecutor's Office. Second will be Superintendent Doug Carter of the Indiana State Police. And following Superintendent Carter, Sheriff Mike Nielsen uh, has a statement that he would like to make. Uh, Prosecutor Meyer will answer questions about the process, the judicial process. Superintendent Carter will not answer questions about the investigation. Uh, and Sheriff Nielsen has a prepared statement. Prosecutor Todd Meyer. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate your uh, work and service to the public to uh, get this information out. Um, I'm going to make some remarks. Uh, I'm going to discuss the charges. I'm going to go through the probable cause affidavit. Um, and then um, I am going to turn things over to Sheriff Nielsen. Uh, it's our intent that after I make some remarks, I will take some questions because I know there are questions um, that I will do my best to try and answer. Of course, some of what is asked, I will simply, by the rules, uh, not be allowed to talk about it as much as I would like to. Um, once things are handed over to Sheriff Nielsen, though, uh, we are not going to go back and talk about the criminal case. Once it gets to the sheriff, uh, this discussion is about the memorial for uh, Deputy Sheriff Pickett and the celebration of his life. I want to thank Superintendent Carter uh, for being here this afternoon and I want to thank his entire uh, department for uh, the efforts that they have undertaken uh, to help in, in lead this investigation at Sheriff Nielsen's request. I want to thank all the other Boone County law enforcement agencies, uh, state, federal agencies that have uh, engaged in this investigation. Things are moving forward at a rapid pace um, in a very thorough manner. I want to take this time to express my deepest and most sincere condolences to uh, the Pickett family and to the entire Boone County law enforcement community, um, of which my office is a member of. Uh, what has happened in Boone County over the course of um, just a matter of days, although it feels like weeks and months, um, have been tragic. Uh, things started last Thursday when Sydney Foster lost her life um, in an automobile accident uh, and two other students were seriously injured in that accident. Following the news of that, then we lose one of our community's leaders. Uh, both of those persons that we lost last week were we celebrated their life in a funeral this morning. Um, if those matters weren't worse enough, then on Friday morning uh, we get the news an officer's been shot and an officer's down. It's been um, a devastating time for the people of Boone County. Uh, it, when, I, when I speak to the folks throughout the county, be it Jamestown, Zionsville, Whitestown, Lebanon, Thorntown, you name it, everywhere in between, uh, people are hurting in this community. There are a lot of answers, lots of questions. There are a lot of answers that they want. And as I mentioned, to the extent that I can within the bounds of the law and the, the ethical rules that I am um, sworn to uphold, um, I will try to answer those questions today for the community. So what happened on the morning of Friday, March the 2nd? In advance of the uh, conference here this afternoon, you all know that I've uh, provided the charging information and probable cause affidavit uh, that is associated with the criminal charges that have been filed against Anthony Bumgart and John Baldwin, Jr. I want to take some time uh, to go through those uh, charges. Uh, Anthony Baumgart has been charged with murder, possession of methamphetamine, that's both a level five and level six felony, Carrying a handgun without a license, a level five felony, and also as a class A misdemeanor. 
resisting law enforcement, possession of marijuana, um, and an enhanced charge of possession of marijuana. I'm going to, I'll outline uh, now the charges against John Baldwin Jr., and then I'm going to cover the ground on the probable cause affidavit because both of these associates uh, were um, together and were a part of the pursuit uh, that ultimately ended out on I-65, but um, certainly diverted in the Indian Springs apartment complex. John Baldwin Jr. has been charged with resisting law enforcement as both a level six and class A misdemeanor. Uh, he's been charged with leaving the scene of an accident, criminal recklessness, auto theft, and his criminal uh, background makes him eligible as a habitual felony offender, and he's been charged with that as well. As has been reported, uh, the events on uh, the morning of uh, March the 2nd uh, began at 1402 Yates Street where police were uh, there to serve an unrelated arrest warrant on a female individual. Um, while there, um, an individual uh, later identified as John Baldwin Jr. was identified by one of the, the officers there at the scene as someone who was also wanted on warrant. He was instructed to um, stop his vehicle. These three individuals were in the vehicle, John Baldwin Jr., John Baldwin Sr., and Anthony Bumgart. Uh, John Baldwin Jr. did not comply with orders to stop the vehicle and a pursuit ensued. Uh, that pursuit um, wove around uh, the streets of Lebanon in a very reckless manner for approximately 10 minutes until it eventually um, made its way over to the Indian Springs apartment complex where John Baldwin Jr. drove the vehicle that he was in um, over and through some yards um, in between the apartment complex and some other homes, uh, crashed through a couple of parked vehicles, um, and at or around this time, Anthony Bumgart was able to um, exit the vehicle and proceeded to flee on foot. John Baldwin Jr. continued um, in his flight in the vehicle and law enforcement continued their pursuit. Deputy Pickett, um, as you all know, as a canine handler, um, was uh, stuck in the area where uh, Baum, Baumgart and Baldwin Jr. were able to crash through the vehicles because um, Officer Pick, Pickett's vehicle was um, larger and was not able to get through. Um, he released his canine in pursuit of Baumgart, who was on foot. He pursued as well. Shots were fired by Baumgart. One shot struck and killed Deputy Pickett. Police then returned fire on Bumgart. Uh, he was shot and wounded and taken into custody. As I indicated, the pursuit involving Baldwin Jr. Um, continued and he was later apprehended by the police out on Interstate 65. I want to stress at this point that this is an active and ongoing investigation. The Indiana State Police um, and the investigative team are working tirelessly along with many other agencies to uncover all of the evidence and all of the individuals who are in any way related to the events that led up to during and after Deputy Pickett's death. And the public can rest assured that there will be no stone that is left unturned and we will conduct a very thorough investigation in anyone who is responsible in any way for the events that occurred on March the 2nd will be held accountable and justice will be served for this community. And for Deputy Pickett. 
with that, I will close my remarks. I will answer any questions that I can. Um, please understand uh, that there is a lot that I would like to say. Um, and I know that many of the people in the community uh, would like to know what I know and what the investigative team knows. But you're just going to have to be patient and let us do our job and get to the bottom of all of this. So it's when I don't answer a question, it's not that I don't want to, it is because I cannot. Based upon the evidence that you have received, the work of investigators, was this the wild shot of a fleeing man or did the suspect turn and fire directly at the officer specifically trying to get him? I think as you will read in the probable cause affidavit, the Baumgart did give a statement to police and in that statement, he talks about uh, the deliberate act of shooting at the police officer. Are you now reviewing your case for uh, the death penalty? So that is one of the things now that my office will uh, be reviewing, yes. And, um, you know, that is a decision that will be made over a matter of time and in due course. It is not something that I take lightly. There are several factors that go into that. Um, looking at the uh, nature and character of the offender, uh, his criminal orientation, uh, the crime that was committed. But yes, in Indiana, uh, the law allows the state to seek the death penalty uh, for any person who is accused of murdering a police officer while acting in the line of duty. Based on the evidence as it's been presented to me thus far and what I know about this case, again, I'm, I can't make, nor I'm not making a decision right now, but yes, I am leaning in that direction. So uh, did the body cam or video part of your investigation and show, if so what did it show? So there's gonna be a lot of um, digital evidence that's a part of this case and uh, we'll be um, reviewing that going forward. I can't speak to the specifics, though, of, of what we've captured um, and what other innocent bystander witnesses have captured on digital uh, recording devices. Do you believe the suspects were on any substances or drugs at the time the police shoot or the shooting? Well, as the charges reveal, um, drugs were found uh, on, the, on the suspects and you know, toxicology results will be coming um, out. They were treated at the hospital for injuries, so we will eventually learn exactly what the state of mind was of these individuals at the time they were fleeing police. You anticipate additional charges. Witnesses' accounts say that this individual was waving a gun around, pointing it at other police officers, fired shots at other police officers, who then returned fire. Do you expect any additional charges? So that question is, is a question that I know a lot of people would like to know the answer to, and all I can say about that is uh, the investigation is ongoing. Um, we are learning more um, each and every day about the circumstances surrounding the events uh, there at Indian Springs and elsewhere. And to the extent that the evidence leads me uh, and my team to determine that additional charges are warranted against the two that have already been charged or others, then you can fully expect that additional charges will be filed. What about John Baldwin Jr.? Had he filed charges against the sheriff before? So again, the investigation is active and ongoing. Um, he is certainly a person that is a part of the events. Um, and as the evidence leads us in certain directions, if he or others are if it is warranted to file charges against them, then charges will be filed. Mr. Meyer, how frustrating is it to see that someone like uh, Baldwin and Bumgar are part of the revolving door? You go to a familiar street agency that should have been behind bars, but in fact, on that day, they chose a danger to public safety. Um, how frustrating is it for your office to have to do the two gentlemen that you look at their background and have a criminal record and presume a criminal record? 
Okay, I understand the question. I'm not going to relate it, my answer directly to the, these two individuals, but um, your question goes to a much broader um, area that is, is extremely frustrating to me and to my fellow prosecutors and to law enforcement um, who are out there in the trenches um, dealing with the same people over and over and over again. So, for instance, in this case, we have the habitual felony offender charge that is available to us, and it has been filed against somebody who's alleged to be a habitual felony offender. Based on the circumstances of the case, I think everyone can appreciate uh, the sensitivity to uh, the Boone County uh, Sheriff and his jail staff. Uh, these individuals are being held in another uh, jail so that there aren't any issues that can ever be raised with regard to their safety or well-being. Can you speak to the weapons that were burned over the years? Does that, does that belong to any of the three individuals? I can't speak directly to the ownership of um, the weapon. Uh, that is something that is um, under investigation, and um, you can know by the charging information, though, that uh, Baumgart was carrying a handgun uh, without being appropriately licensed. Do you know how many times Baumgart fired that weapon? Was it the first shot that hit the deputy, and only fired a few shots? That information is outside the four corners of the probable cause affidavit, and so um, I don't want to get into uh, um, answering that. How many officers fired weapons and how many times were the suspects killed? That is something that um, is being investigated as a part of this entire matter, and we'll get to, you know, we'll get to the bottom of that, but again, that, that really is outside the scope of what I intend to talk about here today. How many, how many additional years does the habitual offender enhancement come into play? It is a, um, a, a, it's based on a formula off of the lead count, the highest level felony count that he's convicted of, so uh, yet to be determined. But I can have more specific information for that. Sir, you spoke with, you mentioned a few moments ago that you've spoken with people in Dade County, White County, but you can't speak specifics of the case. The public um, has questions about why uh, individuals like this are on the street. So can you at least address them, the public, as to how your office tries to at the very least uh, maintain these kinds of individuals or criminals behind bars as long as possible? Because the concern is obviously these are not the only two that currently would be out and about when they should be behind bars. Right, and so I can speak based on my experience in Boone County, which is this. I think the people of Boone County um, should feel very fortunate with regard to uh, the judges that we have that serve this community. The judges um, are responsible for sentencing people and it has been my experience and it is my belief that the judges do um, an excellent job in dealing with criminal offenders that are presented before them and based on their history, character, and the nature and circumstances of the, the crimes um, render very judicious and appropriate sentences. So will Mr. Baldwin then stay in Boone County for a long time, or will he be released in terms of the way the current laws are operating? Well, it would be my, so that's a good question and, and, and something that I want to hit on. Uh, Mr. Uh, Anthony Bumgart is currently being held on no bond. John Baldwin Jr. is being held on higher than standard bond, $100,000 cash on his unrelated probation violation matter, and uh, the, my office today filed a request for higher than standard bond on the case that we filed against him this afternoon for $250,000 uh, cash assurity. So it is the state's intent to keep Mr. Baldwin Jr. in custody until he pleads guilty or is tried and convicted. What about Baldwin Jr.? What's the appropriate way that we would prevent him from being All I can say is it's an ongoing investigation with regard to uh, 
um, any and all other persons who may have some relevancy to uh, this investigation. I'll, I'll answer a couple of more questions and then I want to turn it over to the sheriff. I spoke to the judge uh, this morning and I believe Mr. Baldwin's initial hearing has already occurred and uh, that there are going to be arrangements made for the initial hearing of Baumgart tomorrow. How much trouble was Baumgart in before all this started? What was he looking at as far as jail time or anything? I'm sure he looked this over, but how much trouble was he in before he decided allegedly to commit the act? Well, I think you can see by the charging information, um, perhaps but for the lead count, um, that would be the answer to your question. Did you know, uh, Deputy, that there was a warrant in the case? I did. Okay, so in, in this could be a very difficult case to have to go forth on anyway, but knowing how big of a person he was and how big of an impact he had on the community, that makes it even more difficult, I'm sure, for you to have to go through and read all these details and be here with the sheriff and everyone who's mourning during this time. Is that going to be something? As Sheriff Nielsen has said, and I, can, I cannot say it any more eloquently than he's already said it before. Uh, Deputy Pickett was a good man, a wonderful police officer. Uh, he was liked by all. Uh, he was a pleasure to work with, uh, and he's going to be deeply missed. My message is going to be short today. Um, and, and frankly, I've, I've struggled a little bit, um, but, but I, I think my message needs to be to the, to the Boone County community. And I think through extraordinary evil, there's extraordinary good. And we, we've seen that happen over the course of, of these last many days. So to, to the citizens, I, I suggest to you that there will always be evil that lives amongst us, but the vast majority of people are good. And we cannot, we cannot lose sight of that. That's exactly what Jake Pickett stood for, to find out who wasn't. And he was that he was that force between good and evil. And um, like all of us, we've we, we've we've laid there at night and thought, what could have been done different? What could we have done differently? And the answer is nothing. One day we'll understand why that happened. And and finally, I'll say to you, uh, as I've said to all of you many times, I stand here in support of the sheriff and of the law enforcement community in Boone County, and we will continue to be here. There's not a, a an asset that we have within the ISP that will be committed here. And we ask those that, that know about this complex investigation that's not even remotely done, if you have information for us, please let us know. It could be background in, on people that we talked about today. It could be background on someone else. So we're asking and imploring you to please, please communicate with us. And uh, let this agency get through these next few days. Let this community get through these next few days. And we'll continue to keep this at the very front of us. And um, again, we'll be here to support that throughout. With that said, I'd like to turn the podium over to my friend, Mike Nielsen. Bear with me. Before I read my prepared statement, I would like to say that we have a very special guest. Brick is here, which is Jake's partner today. And this is one of the few times that Brick has left Jake's side, but I felt it was important that it was his partner for him to be here to listen to Prosecutor Meyer, Superintendent Carter, and to my prepared statement. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to the people in this great state of Indiana and to those across this country as we mourn the loss of a hero. As you have heard from Prosecutor Meyer, both individuals were officially charged today in Boone County Superior Court II. I personally arrested and booked into our facility Anthony Baumgart and John Baldwin, Jr. on the charges that Prosecutor Meyer has filed. I am angry. I am so angry. I am sad. I am heartbroken. And I am devastated. But we are not alone. Our community and our brothers and sisters across this country have come together in our time of need. For that, we will forever be grateful. Jake, we will not give up until justice is done for you. You are a true warrior. We will all stand together steadfast 
until those responsible for your untimely death are held accountable. Jake, you paid the ultimate sacrifice, and we will never forget your courage, your dedication, your commitment, and your warrior spirit. You will forever live on in our lives and in those lives that you touched by giving yourself so graciously even after death. Jake's visitation will be held at Crown Hill Funeral Home in Indianapolis on Thursday, March 8th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Jake's funeral services will be held Friday, March 9th at 11 o'clock at the Connection Point Christian Church. Immediately following the services, Jake will be escorted by Jen School, by the Boone County Courthouse, by his memorial vehicle, then through Whitestown, Zionsville, and then on to his final resting place at Crown Hill Cemetery. The further details on the exact route will be available when they are finalized. Jen would like to personally thank each of you for the outpouring of support. Thank you.